Welcome back to Pole Barn Garage, where today I have something pretty special for you. Under this mezzanine here is a 1978 King Cobra Mustang II, 302 power and a four speed. This car has been sitting here since 1997. It's got the authentic barn dust to prove it. Right there, Johnson County, Kansas, 1997. She's got the louvers on her. It's hardly rusty at all, and I can tell. Still got the Cobra wheels, but most importantly, Looky there, we got a wiggle stick. Not only that, we got an eight track player. Let's get the tires up on it and get a drug out here into the middle where we can really get our eyes on it. Here coming out of the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that one's going. Try to get as many of them up as we can here. Okay. And he's got that big old loader there. We can get her pulled out. <laughs> so go ahead and put it in neutral. Oh good, rat poison. It certainly has an odor about it. Ugh. Ooh, we got map light. Oh, we got a mouse hole. Huh? Hmm? Put that right back up there. Gonna be. Yeah? So it caught on fire? Yes, right here. This inner fender caught on fire. See, this steel, uh -huh. that plastic inner fender, Melted you'll, you'll see. This is all iron. Yeah. I can't believe they're not worse than that. that I'm kind of impressed. Pop the hood here. Got the 302 in here. and Well, she's... Oh, she's pretty, pretty locked up. I'm gonna try to get this thing to roll. If it won't roll, we'll probably just haul her home and mess with it there. Ah. Well, this guy's just going to haul it home for me, and I can't say no to that. I think it's smarter to take it home, soak the cylinders, and try to do it the right way so we don't waste a potentially good engine. I cannot, for the life of me, get this key to turn again. It literally turned to start with. I mean, this must seem like total amateur hour to everybody watching. It's, hmm. Here we are much later with the King Cobra in my shop. Why don't we dive into this car a little bit and see what makes a King Cobra a King Cobra. Every one of these cars is rated at 139 horsepower. However, this car has a four barrel on it and it kind of looks like a four barrel intake uh, that would not be factory. We have these styled aluminum wheels, 13 inches, of which I actually have another set with brand new tires. Forget you saw that. The window louvers and the rear deck spoiler. We have flares, front and rear air dam. Inside the car, we have a sport steering wheel with the stallion on it. We have a brushed aluminum dashboard. What the hell's that? What do we got here? Ooh, look at there, half dollar. You see how dusty this thing really is. Back seat's in fantastic condition. In fact, the whole car's in fantastic condition. I would actually hazard to guess that this might actually be the nicest original Mustang II I have ever seen in my life. But whether a car is nice or not, doesn't really do us a damn bit of good if the engine won't turn over. So let's pull out all eight spark plugs and we'll stick a bore scope in the cylinders and see what we're really working with here. Let's see what we got for a carb on this thing. Carter or an Edelbrock? Well, it's not froze up. Fun fact, by the way, Ford started making their air cleaners out of aluminum, I believe in 1978, to save weight for corporate average fuel economy, the cafe standards. All right, well, let's get to the business end of things here. All right, in no particular order, we'll start over here at what would be the number five cylinder on a Ford. Okay, I see some corrosion, but they're clean. Hmm, so far, not seeing anything terribly alarming. You know, I don't know if I ever pulled the dipstick on this thing. Oh, zero oil in it. <laughs> Oh, please tell me it's not going to be a spun bearing. That's really going to put a damper on my spirits. 
Boy, that one is bad. I'm not seeing anything alarming out of these plugs. I mean, there's a little bit of rust, but not too bad. Let's get the bore scope. Ooh. Pretty bad. Uh, that's the face of the piston. That's just carbon. It doesn't look that bad. It's rusty, for sure, but I've seen worse. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty bad. That baby's stuck. In that corner. Yeah, that one looks all right. Yeah, that one's pretty good. See the streaks in the cylinder? Mm-hmm. That's a uh, pretty heavy wear, especially right there. See those real deep ones? Oh, yeah. This baby is an oil burner. Number eight's the rusty one, but we'll fill them all up just in case. Good thing is, is that number eight, the piston was about halfway down, so we'll be able to get some fluid on top of it. Behold, <laughs> Jess's nail polish remover. A little bit of naphtha and some ATF. Uh, just pour a little ATF in here. Pour this in. And then we'll pour this naphtha in. If nothing else, it should be incredibly flammable. Diesel? Yeah. Don't forget to shake. Yes. Don't tell my fire insurance. Good to the last drop. Let's go ahead and fill the crankcase with diesel. Will this do anything? I doubt it. Will it hurt anything? No. Come on! Well, while we let the engine marinate, we will uh, pull the steering wheel and see if I can't get this damn key to turn. Disconnect the stallion. I hate these kind of steering wheel pullers, but it's all I have right now. So, I think we're going to have to dig into this a little bit, which, frankly, I'm really not looking forward to. Uh, but, I don't see how we have much choice, do we? Two hours later. I've taken apart pretty much the entire column. I've been trying to remove the lock cylinder. I don't know why. Okay, well, it's fixed. Well, I'm back out here today. It's been marinating for a little while. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the radiator out of it, fan shroud and stuff, so I can get down on that balancer real nice and be able to put some leverage at it. Obviously, I'm not trying to pull the whole damn car apart, so we're gonna do as little as possible here. These words would come back to haunt me. This is called foreshadowing. I gotta take the fan off. There's like that much room in there. Well, it had coolant in it, so I guess that's a plus. Um, I just, I'm, I gotta pull the radiator to get to anything here, so took off the lower hose and uh, well, lo and behold, it peed everywhere. Good chance to use my super clean floor absorbent. This is some damn good stuff. Now what? I tell you what, they had this radiator locked down tighter than four freaking knocks. You know, I don't feel like this AC condenser is going to do a whole lot anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's like a film strip. Just a little rusty. Good lord. There. I'm going to go ahead and chop the belts off of it. Probably not what it is, but hey, don't hurt to find out, does it? The pulleys have rusted to the belt in, like, <laughs> semicircles. <laughs> Time to whip out the old double barrel. Throw this on here, try miserably, fail. Scary, I hate doing this. Can we go backwards? Ugh. I'm tightening a 15 16 bolt and not moving the engine. Well, she's stuck. I've been messing with this thing for about an hour now and it won't move and it's not gonna. And with those deep vertical scores we had in the cylinders even if it did break free it's gonna run like shit. so i think what we need to do is find a motor and try to get a motor stuck in this thing i got into just like yeah i could take the heads off of this thing you know wire wheel the cylinders and and probably get it to run but it's gonna run terrible and that's not what i do you know i'm not just here just to do this for content i'm here to build cars so we need to find a motor and we're gonna try to keep it as cheap as possible and I think I know one way to do that. This is the other Mustang I picked up a while back. It's been hitting the front wheel pretty damn hard. 
and the frame is bent on it. I thought I could save it, but right now we have a much nicer one. It did have a good run in 302 in it. We'll pull it in the shop and start gutting it. it sh I shouldn't feel bad, but I do. It has no floors in it at all, anywhere. And the, like I said, this wheel, we measured it. This wheel is four inches further back than the other side is. I mean, it's really bad. Ah, yes. A lap of luxury that is the Mustang too. God, Jesus. All right. If we're gonna do it, let's do it. I'm gonna start pulling everything off the top of the engine and then I'll slide underneath and see what I gotta do under there. One good thing about doing this and putting a new engine in this car is at least we're gonna be able to undo some of the uh, stuff that's been done to it. Like this boat primer. Why is, I don't know. What? Is that soap or It's rat poison. poison. No, it's iron spring. Oh, they use, no, oh, for real. <laughs> yeah. Heater hoses off, all the front accessories. We got everything up top unbolted, including the exhaust manifolds, successfully, I might add. So now we're going to go ahead and pop the hood, and then I'm going to crawl under it and start yanking stuff out of the bottom. Got it? Yeah. All right, fixed. Take her up, Gomer. Oh, I should chalk the wheel. One sec. Don't damage that air dam. It's worth more than your life. Oh, man. What's up? Go We're gonna have to go high. Well, you may have to get the smaller jack stands, honestly. Yeah. I think I'm gonna unbolt the bell housing from the transmission and try to pull the engine and bell housing together because I'd like to have the bell housing out to assemble on the new engine. Cable clutch, that's nice. We gotta unhook that for sure. Look how solid this thing is under here. Yeah. It's a little tough to see because I'm kind of squeezed in here myself, but there is virtually no rust in this car, and for a Mustang II, that almost never happens. I gotta figure it's easier to take these four bolts out than it is to take all the bell housing bolts off. I don't know if this thing's gonna get in our way when I try to pull it. You know, for a little tiny car, there's a surprising amount of room in here. I say as I'm barely fitting underneath it. Bottom two are out. Just gotta get the top two, and those are, of course, the more difficult ones that I put off doing. All right, here we go. Wobble socket and about eight feet of extension required for that one. Come on, you long-winded, dirty run. So I'm gonna unhook the clutch cable. Looks like somebody's definitely been here. The spring's all broken. They tried coiling another spring into it. Really, really high quality fixes here. Good stuff. I gotta loosen the jam nut on the clutch cable so I can move it further out. The one size fits most wrench on here. There we go. I was trying to remove the oil filter so I could get to the motor mount bolt. And uh, it didn't look rusty, but turns out it is. Oh no. Oh, this thing's garbage. That's amazing. I'd say it. it's first for me. I've seen them rusted off, but not where they look fine on the outside. Oh, <laughs> it smells like it smells like paint. Right. I think the motor's just gonna fall out of it now, or who knows? Get ready to call 911, Jess. What's the number? I don't know. I don't think it'll reach. Oh. Hmm? Is it really?
really how I wanted to do it, but I'll have to lift the car up a little bit. Oh, ick. Right in the ick. Engaging tensile strength tester. To get this sucker free of that engine mount there. I'll see if I can snake it around the other engine mount's gonna hit him. All this just so I don't have to get exhaust done on <laughs> But uh, that's expensive. Why are you coming with? Do we, do we forget a bolt? You don't need to come with. You stay behind. Bye-bye. Putting it back in with the engine mounts on is gonna be tricky. You know, I don't even think I forgot to unbolt anything, except for all those things I forgot to unbolt. See, the tensile strength tester just tested this uh, ground strap here. Uh, it's about uh, 748 Newton kilograms. Those are official numbers. I wouldn't expect anybody to get it. Testing. Testing. Still testing. Ah, oh, yes. Yes, commence urination. Urinating. Huzzah! One garbage 302. This thing isn't house trained at all. It's a happy little guy. Yeah. All Not right. really, apparently, but yeah. Yeah. He's just happy to be peeing. You don't like to turn, do you, new engine voice? Hmm. Don't do this at home, kids. Yeah. Ooh. Needs a throw out bearing. Probably needs a clutch. And uh, unfortunately, a Mustang 2 clutch is only for a Mustang 2, a V8 Mustang 2, that is. Uh, and they are $450 for a clutch kit for this car. Let's see what the clutch looks like if I need to put one on order. We'll definitely be putting a new one of these on because in the Mustang 2 chassis, this starter is basically inaccessible. Why is there silicone sealing the bell housing to the engine? What kind of dumbass thinks that there's something back here to leak? Look at the bright blue paint in that. <laughs> that was a nice Krylon rebuild. Remanufactured clutch. 1978. Partially due to the Carter administration, we started to switch to the metric system in this country. Therefore, foreshadowing the downfall of America. Let me get a 10 mil. Oh. <laughs> I really want to say yes because the new one's $450, but you can see the gouges in it. Mm. That thing's going to chatter. I don't know. Well, this is just the pressure plate side though. Let's get it stuck to the flywheel. I'd sure, sure really like to just put a new clutch in with it. Well, I went ahead and bought the incredibly expensive flywheel with clutch kit. And now we get to eat ice soup for the next three months. <laughs> Good God. But I did it because they do sell the $450 replacement clutch that this company sells. Classic Auto Reproductions sells just Mustang 2 stuff. Well, they have the clutch kit that's a bolt him thing except you have to get the flywheel drilled for a different dowel position. I don't have the time to get that done. Plus, this thing needs resurfaced anyway. In fact, it's so pitted, I don't even know. It's been resurfaced once already. So I went ahead and bought their Stage 1 clutch kit. Uh, it upgrades it to a 10-inch clutch, and we have a new billet flywheel, and it, it'll be nice, but it was not cheap. Holy God, it was not cheap. It's okay, we, we just, we gotta save this shim plate right here. This, that's all, we need that. That's a weird, a lot of diesel in there. Oh, man. Huh, that's, uh. Oh, my. Yeah. Good thing I didn't eat that. Well, the things are okay. Oh, God, did you? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to have this kind of relationship, I see. i got to yank these uh, motor mounts off because I ordered a rebuild kit for them uh, from the same company, Classic 
auto reproduction. So we'll use our super clean to soak this up. Well, <laughs> I guess we'll pull the engine out of the other one tomorrow. Make a bigger mess. And then we'll clean the hell out of the engine bay of this thing. We'll get everything nice and buttoned up while we wait for parts. And, uh, you know, we might have a car by the end of this video. I saved it. Completely bogus confidence. Well, it's the next morning. So we got the engine out of the King Cobra. Now let's pop the engine out of this. And also, maybe we want to look a little closer at the damage of this. It's frankly, you know, we probably need the engine out of it to repair it, even if I wanted to do that. Yeah, pop the hood off of this, and then we'll start digging in and ripping this 302 out of here. And we'll give her the uh, Krylon rebuild while we're at it. Let's go your way and just put it behind the car, maybe. Or up against that wall. Next up, I think I'm going to pull this Monte Carlo bar out of here. That's kind of weird. I don't know if that's factory because of the T-tops, maybe. It looks like they just self-tapped it in about a thousand times, so probably factory. That might be kind of good to put in the King Cobra, too, a little extra stability. Everything on the top end is pretty much done. Got to do the motor mounts, four converter bolts, and four bell housing bolts. So to access anything under here, I have to remove this cross member. That includes the starter, torque converter bolts, and the bell housing bolts. I don't think this is coming out without a fight. It's the beauty of a parts car. I don't care. Easy access to everything now. God, this thing's rusty. Uh, conveniently, get to this starter right here. Very easy to access. Very easy to round that off. Oh, that's wonderful, thanks. Both motor mount bolts were literally just finger tightened and they just fell out. That's a really encouraging sign that this engine is pristine, well-maintained. Here we go. Gentle now. Uh, JD, get the chain stretcher. I've successfully stretched the chain with the chain stretcher 3000. I got the same thing. It does wire too. Use it at work all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 Ah, yes. Stuck a big time. Big stuck. Be free! Ah, yes. That's a, <laughs> that's a C chord right there. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, maybe we, uh, lift from the back? Yeah, maybe. Smart idea. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty much genius, actually. It's gonna work. My IQ was 45, uh, so they, they said I was pretty much genius. Sent me to a special school and all kinds of stuff. I don't think that means you're smart. No, uh, yeah, 45. That's like Einstein. Oh, yes. Well, oh. we, we tested the strength of something there. I'm not sure what. Should come out now. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah she's coming. No problem. Pretty much yep. free. Totally, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh. oh. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. It's pretty normal, really. Oh. What is it? Starter. Huh? Starter. Well, I unbolted it. Oh, okay. Well, good. Looks like a finished hole in there. I think she's drilled. That's very important. Uh, if it wasn't, we'd be uh, up a creek. Mm -hmm. Safety first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. He's getting the plate mounted on the back of the engine. We'll get her on the stand. Goodbye. The floor is slippery. Goodbye. rebuild this bad boy with super clean this stuff is amazing let me tell you see by using this technique I can clean this simulate snowfall and my floor all at the same time we'll give it a little light agitation yes I will end up wearing most of this Ford 302 by the time we're done with this if only there was something I could put over my eyes but there's just not
It's a pretty dirty one. It needs a little extra help. We're going to change the intake and the valve covers anyway, so I'm not too worried about those. Hey guys, I'm going to steal you for a little bit and we're going to get this cleaned up while Dalton is at work. All of this nastiness is going to go away, including our amazing grasshopper collection. Sad to see it go, but it has to. First step is the super clean. Now we have to get rid of all the barn dust. I'm sorry, because I know you love it, but here we go. Orders are orders. I'm trying to get the louvers up, but uh, well, maybe we save that part for Dalton, because I don't think I'm going to get that thing to budge. Here we have it. A little lot cleaner. I just got home, raining its ass off, but I wanted to look at this since Jess cleaned it. Good God, this car is in good shape. Anyway, I got to pull the four barrel intake off the original engine from it, and uh, I want to swap that on to the new engine and then paint it. Got to blast the rat sh poison off of this thing. Put it up into the air where it can be inhaled. Even the intake on this thing is so rusty, I'm going to have to drive that bolt out with an air hammer. It's not rounded, it's literally rotten away. Got it. Great success. Mm -hmm. There we go. Ah, yes. The red RTV. Sign of a good craftsman there. Damn. This thing's clean as can be inside. Well, due to my leaky barn, we've set up this canopy inside here. It's brilliant, truly. Just going to completely rebuild the intake. It's brand new. This thing is glued on here. God, the other engine looked way better than that inside. <laughs> it's not exactly what you want to see. Um, <laughs> shit. Here we are. Let's clean it out as best we can. Get it a little super clean in here. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it cleans up like new. Cleaning, cleaning. Rip this water pump off. I'm gonna change that while we're in here too, just because it's a, it's a little uh, bent. <laughs> oh man, I really know how to pick them. It's pretty good. Oh man. Oh no. <laughs> We're archaeologists. What now. in the hell? That stop leak. Oh god. Oh. I think it is. Or oh, just crap, I guess. Oh my god. Ah yes. Like it never happened. Stop leak? Where? There is no stop leak in here. I'm sure we won't have any troubles out of this engine. None. None whatsoever. That's right. Positive thinking. That's what we do here. Not really. Let's go ahead and completely rebuild this. Ah, uh, yes. Look at that. You can't buy that out of the Jake's catalog. You can't get that given to you by a multi-billion dollar corporation. Right over the rust. A little bit of grime there to seal that in, you know. Now, obviously, we'll be putting a fuel pop oil filter and spark plugs in it. I got these valve covers at a swap meet like 15 years ago for like a dollar. And now, I've hoarded them long enough that they have become useful. So we'll go ahead and put some chrome valve covers on here to add lots of horsepower. Well, yeah. <laughs> Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. JD, you know how we're going to take care of this problem? How? By doing absolutely nothing. Yep. As usual. Probably don't want to know what's going to come out of here, judging by everything else. Ah, yeah. Blacker than my soul. Pop filter off. Yep. Oh. That's a good sign. Nothing. This was running a couple of days ago. Hmm. Well, we'll just pretend that that... Yeah, it's okay. We'll probably hold off on putting on a new filter because it gets in the way of the motor mount. But we can go ahead and fill it with some oil. Go ahead and throw some zinc goo in here. I like the Rizlone stuff because I think it might actually be zinc and actually have enough in it. Does it? I don't know. You tell me. Don't use Rotella diesel oil. Now, you can. It's not going to hurt anything. But the zinc in Rotella is the wrong kind of zinc for a flat tappet engine, technically. There we go. Freshly rebuilt. Nothing some 1040 won't take care of. And you're ready to put the intake gaskets on. And uh, I always like to glue just a little skin coat around the water jackets on them. Just to take up for any pitting or anything like that. That is no doubt on the 50 year old cylinder head. And then I make the china walls out of a 3 8 bead of silicone. That's why I buy the big Colt gun tubes of them. And this silicone will also kind of help hold the gasket in place while we install the intake. Nice big glob in the corner. And keep it nice and tall. I mean, you're not going to do too much here. It might look a little ugly, but it probably won't leak. And that's really more important, isn't it? Smear a little silicone on the intake side of the coolant ports as well. We're going to let this kind of skin over a little bit. Then we'll drop the intake on. Here comes the drop. It's bluged out pretty nice. Always torque from the middle out. Torque. Fancy. Get our valve covers on here and seal this baby back up and then pretend we never looked inside of it. Go ahead and put the water pump on. This brand new unit from O'Reilly. Glue the gasket to the back of the water pump. And then I'm going to use an excessive amount on this timing cover. So you look at this timing cover real close. See all the pitting on that thing? It needs replaced. We're not replacing it. So, uh, yeah, lots of silicone will do the trick. Well, I got this thing in my face right here. Might as well go ahead and change the fuel pump. It'll damn sure be a pain in the ass if I do it in the car. So we'll put this new fuel pump on it that'll inevitably fail within 500 miles. Speaking of which, I've had two fuel pumps die that were new, and each of them has died, well, one of them has like 10 miles on it in Sergeant Stubbs, and then the van has like 500 miles on it, and its fuel pump died. Thank you, O'Reilly Auto Parts. It's even in here. <laughs> oh. Anybody have any idea why fuel pumps always come with two gaskets? Because I have no idea. Trying to dodge raindrops from my leaky roof and rebuild the pulleys. There we go. Yeah, good stuff. This thing's pretty much ready to go, I think. Got our fuel pump on. Wait for a motor mount rebuild kit and a flywheel and a clutch. Let's pop her in. It's me again. So. I have some sandpaper, got some spray paint. We're gonna give this in here a little bit of love. I'm gonna do what I can until Dalton gets back and then we'll see where we go from there. I'm gonna try as best as I can to get some of this rust out. It rained for like a day solid, so it's a little treacherous in here. Everything is so wet. What a soupy mess, ugh. extension we were looking for. <laughs> look how nice this is now. Won't you just look at it? Pretty much new. I don't think I can clean any more surfaces. Call it good and go wash my hands. They kind of burn. I have returned and I've moved the canopy in here to keep the engine bay dry so that we can paint it theoretically. Jess cleaned everything up in here. Looks real nice but there's a couple things we got to do. I've already loosened the bulkhead connector for the wiring harness. We're gonna end up needing to change this entire wiring harness. The whole thing is a burned and B eaten to the point where I just 
I don't think there's much using this. That other parts Mustang had a whole complete wiring harness with it. Uh, it's not perfect, but it is significantly better than this one. So I'm gonna pull this one off and then when, after we paint it, we'll put that back on. The other car also had a brand new brake booster inside of it. We're gonna go ahead and take that off. We'll go ahead and put a new booster master cylinder on it. Looks like these harnesses are pretty much the same. You got one extra wire in the new harness, but that should be fine. So that's good news. This Motorcraft ignition box was on its way out. It's like pre-melted right now. Hardly ever catch them pre-melted. It's usually all of the melt. Yeah, I gotta get the brake booster off. Got everything laid out here, kind of tested some spray paint there. I think it'll look all right. Uh, I left the wiring harness together uh, on the headlight side, just so I know where everything goes. So we'll just start putting it back in once everything's painted. Try to get this booster off, because I have a new one. I might as well use it. It's somewhere down there in that rat shit. This looks like a joy. This is just the kind of quality you can expect out of a Mustang too. This brace that's, you know, right in my way. Uh, that's structural. Uh, that holds the car together. It's, uh, yeah, real, real good stuff there. Oh, yeah. I think I made the right call there, though. That was probably worth the effort. I'm sure I'm not quite as thorough as Jess. Mm -hmm. Maybe I just like my flammable liquids. There we go. It's definitely more of a pure white than the car. The car's kind of a Wimbledon white, but uh, this is okay. I think when we actually go to paint the car, I'll probably go with a more pure white and blue. That's a completely different harness than what the car had, and I can't figure out how to hook up the ignition with this harness. Um, it's, you know, everything's just kind of a cluster. I don't I may have to just put the original harness back in. Well, I got it laid out, at least I could fix it. Quite a while later, I've successfully turned three wiring harnesses into one. I robbed chunks out of the car, out of the extra harness here. I had to patch in a whole alternator harness, uh, the ignition harness, but I, we have a harness that should work now, so that's good. Been out here just kind of farting around with this thing. Today, I got the brake booster mounted. Uh, I got a, a hose put on the engine, and you know, little things. Now, I'm rebuilding the motor mounts. These little things are from Classic Auto Reproductions. Uh, bought them out of my own pocket, no sponsor stuff, but I am kind of trying to work on them because they sell aftermarket fiberglass stuff, like the louvers, because these don't fit, and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I'm, you know, definitely, you know, hey, Classic Auto Reproductions, check them out. They're the only people who sell that. But you gotta separate the motor mounts, and that's what I'm kind of working on here. Turns out the car actually had the wrong motor mounts in it, so those are junk. Those are out of the parts car. Thank God I just happen to have another Mustang II parts car because they don't make mounts for it. So what I'm doing here is basically lighting them on fire, trying to soften the rubber. These are vulcanized rubber, so it's this is superheated and then shoved into some rubber, basically, and the rubber bonds to it that way. This one's cleaned pretty well. Little wire wheel work will get it. Uh, this one, not so much. God, this is a messy, horrible job. Thankfully, fire will help us. You just kind of cut them open, and then, then they light, they light up real nice. Um, <clears throat> don't uh, don't don't tell anybody. Look at my genius on full display here. Whew, that's hot and stinky. You ever wonder why they put warning labels on some things? You're just like, who would do that? It's me. That's why. Jesus. Got the motor mounts all separated, cleaned up, and painted. Got some window weld coming tomorrow that I'll need to install the new polyurethane bushings. While we wait for that, really don't have much else to do other than tear into the brakes. And yeah, that's gonna be real easy. Piece of cake. I'm sure this isn't, I'm sure not every single thing is rusted together with the force of God. Let's see what's behind here. Oh, oh yeah, that's uh, never coming off of there. Three of them came off pretty good. This one not so much. There we go. Ah. Oh, good oh. God. Boy, I tell you, nobody picks a winner like I do. Pretty bad. Rusty. Well, especially on a... Oh, look at the rotors. Oh. Oh, the piston is completely extended out of the caliper. Look at that. 
See the piston? Yeah. It's pushed all the way out. That guy ran this thing into the ground. I'm gonna spray these down with brake clean. Not really so I can clean anything, but so I can kill everything living in it. Calipers off. We got the brake hose off, but the tube nut is froze to the line, typically. Uh, I'll just thread the hose onto that if I have to. Let's see what our bearings look like. Uh, that's not bad. These could probably be saved as long as the other three look like this. I'm pulling it apart just so it's ready to go and I get new rotors tomorrow. Uh, and then I'm going to at least try to run the hoses and the calipers onto it. Uh, we'll see uh, how far we get tonight. Mice had literally eaten that brake hose. And this one's starting to round off, so time to break out the vice grips. Front brakes are assembled as far as we can without rotors. The other drum came off there. Got all our rubber lines on. But uh, this one, looking like it's going to be kind of bare. Hung up on the shoes. We've got a long ways to go, so that's why I'm just kind of glossing over everything here, guys. Don't, uh, don't take it personal. Right, it's several hours later, I've rebuilt both rear brakes. I made two new brake lines for the back, bench bled the master cylinder, installed it. We get rotors tomorrow and we should have a complete brake system. It's almost 3 o'clock in the morning. I've been up since 4.30 yesterday morning for work. This car is killing me. <laughs> this thing is just very weirdly rusty under here. It's not through rust anywhere just scaly and I think that has a lot to do with it. I think uh, old boy went fishing with this thing more than once. Makes sense, you could fit your rods in there, no problem. There is absolutely something dead back there near the gas tank and well, you can see in the car there, I also got a gas tank for it. We'll unearth that problem tomorrow. By the way guys, I'm shutting everything down right now. Uh, video's still going, don't worry. but. Uh, check out shirtstampmerch.com and pick you up a koozie and a shirt maybe. Uh, you know, we keep them real low priced. Hats too. Uh, everything is, well, it's <laughs> not making a whole lot on it, but get yourself some merch. It helps support the channel. You know, I appreciate that because this is expensive. <laughs> I have returned. What we're going to have to do is glue these motor mounts together. And the way you do that is with windshield urethane, actually. Uh, that stuff is, you know, basically indestructible, and it is a good way to make sure, even though these will be bolted together, it's going to make sure that they're good. If you're ever trying to glue stuff together, it helps to rough it up a little bit, even the polyurethane itself. So I'm just going to take a wire wheel and just kind of rough up the surface. And then they just sit right together, just like that. Not sure how much it needs exactly. But I'm gonna guess there's no such thing as too much. Mm -hmm. Put the two halves together. Careful now, Dalton. Don't be an idiot like you normally are. Oh, there we go. See, I almost put it together backwards. I am a dumbass. There's a the motor mount. Right there. Put the lock washer, this big old nylock on here. Tighten this nut down. There, motor mounts are on there. Went in and bolted them onto the engine. Hopefully I uh, got them right. Uh, I don't don't really know. I'm going to go pull the gas tank out of it and see what the hell died on top of it. Uh, actually, before I do the gas tank, I got some new rotors to throw on the front. Probably get the brakes totally finished up. I even ordered some new drums for the rear. I'm gonna go ahead and rebuild my new brake drums. You know, here with this. Uh, bought this cool black stainless uh, epoxy spray paint at the hardware store. Looks really nice. Looks like cast iron. Allow me to share a new discovery with you. This used to be super clean. <laughs> it's purple, generally. But I've been soaking overnight all the bearings in it. And look at that. They're just like new. They come out, all the grease, the super clean just like absorbed it. Uh, that's a hell of a handy trick there. I'd say within an hour or two, they were pretty damn clean, you know? Uh, Pretty effortless. A little bit of brake clean, spray the insides out, and they're good to go. And there we go. New rotors and everything on this thing. God, I hope it's worth it. Absolutely will not be worth it. But it looks good. Looks good. I gotta put my uh, new Chinesium drums on there, and then let's figure out what the hell died back there. Oh my god. Dude, whatever's back here. 
I mean, it's like top 10 worst things I've ever smelled in a car. Oh God, there's gas in it. Oh, 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 holy sh! Literally smells like cabinet varnish. Oh my God. Not quite that lucky. Oh, this is going really well. Time to go boom. Goodbye, cruel world. Go boom. Not quite. Hey, hey, look, a gas tank. Oh, God, it's so gross. But, God, I don't see the dead thing. Uh, a little concerning. Uh, there's one of those. Buy a PBG hat now. Shirtstampmerch.com before I destroy all of them. Oh, it's just it's covered in goo. Sticky varnish. Alright, I gotta pull this access panel out so I get to the filler assembly. Uh, the vent hose is really decayed and kinked, actually. If that's not allowed to breathe, uh, it's gonna be a real bitch to put gas in this thing. I pulled this access panel out of here. And, uh, you know, I was just kind of expecting to see, you know, normal things. But it's not. It has some sort of surge tank or vapor tank or something up here. It's the dead thing in here. Managed to get that out of there without removing the tank, which is good because I can't. So, uh, I gotta go get some hose to replace this. We'll just put this back in and pretend we never looked at any of that. Our vent hose is replaced. Now I gotta cut out what's left of the fuel tank straps. Right in the face. Work on cars, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Looks like these carriage bolts fit in here okay. They'll kind of hold in place. I... Is it enough to hold the gas tank in? I guess we'll find out the hard way, probably. Try to get the filler neck in the hole. Try to get these straps up in place, at least one of them bolts I found are just a hair too short. And one of those. Oh, that is nice. That is very, very, very nice. I'm gonna go ahead and bleed the brakes on this turd while we got it up in the air. and Then I might try to do the shocks, depending how many T's I get into. I don't see anything dripping, so I guess it's all right. We had a couple lines blow out up here. Uh, the left front was plugged, actually, not blown. So I changed that one out. And then actually the rear line out of the master to the prop valve is uh, leaking just a bit on that elbow there. So let's go ahead and change that. Resume bleeding the brakes on this car that never ceases to be a pain in my ass. I'm gonna try to get the shocks off of this thing and get her back on the ground so it'll be ready to go. Our brakes work pretty good, or at least I think they do. I guess the only way to find out is to put the engine in, which, well, I can't do right now. So, waiting on parts still. Out of there. Oh my god, the bushing is completely gone in this. Wow. I feel like this one might have made a little noise. Uh, hate to see it. What we were replacing them with is KYB Excel G's. A pretty good budget shock, and they work well and they're cheap. Uh, come on now. This baby tightened in, knock out the other front one, and then we're gonna do the rears. Those are gonna suck. They got all some kind of goofy plate thing bolted to the chassis of the car. Then we gotta figure out how that works. But the fronts are easy, that's why I started here. So we gotta do rear shocks. Hindsight being what it is, probably should have done that while the gas tank was out and not in my way. But as you know, I'm pretty dumb. So that one's not gonna be too bad, but this one. Ugh. Yikes. Uh, you can see that it's bolted to this plate. You unbolt the plate, and then it must bolt to the top of that plate, I guess. What a bizarre way to do that. There's no access from inside of the hatch. Well, this is going to end up hurting me somehow, I'm sure. We... Oh, come on, you ballless piece of shit. I just got that unbolted. What a nightmare. But it worked. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't think those were going to do much, were they? Nope. Didn't want to cooperate. So, off comes the death wheel. Oh, come on. I bet these things are original. I haven't really ever seen a shock that looks like this before. This is... wow. 
<laughs> is it this was it the road tar that preserved this car so well I mean <laughs> so weird well anyway throw it back in there probably throw a little paint on that and then throw it up there well uh, yeah I uh, had bolted that together the wrong way it's fine I, yeah, I did that on purpose really just testing you guys Shocks are done, rear shocks are back in, front shocks are done. Of course, the brakes are probably functional. We're gonna put the new tires I have. I actually had an extra set of Cobra wheels uh, just laying around. So before we even went to get the thing, I had them mounted and balanced with some new BFGs. Three of them are pretty good. One of them is real bad. The gnarly one. If you have any ideas on how to fix this thing, you know, let me know. Muratic acid or something like that. Ah, yes, the 13-inch wheels of glory. Hey, everybody. Today, we're going to be cleaning out the inside of the Mustang. You guys and me, we've got a lot of stuff in here. Um, a fantastic array of feces, some rat poison, a whole bunch of stuff. We don't really know what I'm going to get into in here. Pretty terrible out here. It's freezing. Well, actually, it's 30 degrees, so it's below freezing. So... We're just gonna bundle up and get into it, right? Oh yes, yes. Tons of poison. That's just really, really exciting. Ooh. My wages. Yeah. Ooh, 50 cent pieces. Not too shabby at all. I'm not really sure what this goes to, but let's just go ahead and put this out to the other side. It's got a dollar and 11 cents. Here's a coin for Mid America Sports Complex of Kansas City to dollar off. Movies at home. Rentals only. Hey, back when you used to be able to rent movies. What is in here? Yes. A little foam pad. Looks like maybe an old insurance card or something. So, this is one of Dalton's amazing uh, inventions. He's using it to clean out part of the motor, but. I think I'm going to use it for getting down in this little sketchy spot. One floor mat, two floor mats. I don't even want to know what's on there. Not going to breathe heavily. But wait, just when you thought two floor mats was enough, we have three. And the floor's perfect under it. Not sure what this is or why it won't come up, but if it wants to live there, we gotta evict it. It's got a pretty good vocabulary. It's pretty expansive, but I can't uh I can't really describe this smell. It's unique. Yeah. I was cleaning along thinking, man, this really just isn't picking up very well. And uh, I think I found my culprit. Uh so we're gonna clean that guy out real quick and then go clean the car out some more. Totally fine to breathe in. I'll go ahead and bottle this up for us. This will be on sale in the merch. Ooh, look what I found. Two ski ball tickets. I've got it pretty well vacuumed out. I think it looks fantastic. Now we're going to, <laughs> hey, our friend again. Jess has been cleaning up the interior. I'm gonna help her finish the job here, and we're still waiting on a clutch and a flywheel that will be here eventually. About to do some pro upholstery here. Yep the perfect shade oh there we go see it's so dark you can't even see it it's fixed and see we'll now repair it permanently like that Ooh, what's this more oh yeah there we go there we go see you guys can't even see it and uh and uh oh it's gone and i think the interior is nice and clean now it looks great headliners completely reupholstered seats are all clean it doesn't even need carpet really once you put the floor mats in and they cleaned up nice. We saved a little bit of money there. At long last, flywheel and clutch have arrived. Let's pick this thing up, install the pilot bushing, and then uh, you know start putting this thing together. Can't tell. A little bit under the weather. The show must go on. So our first step here is going to be to install the pilot bearing. Now, 
stock would have a bushing in the back of this, but we'll go ahead and put a pilot bearing in the back of that because that's what it came with. I, I don't really think it makes that big of a difference, but it's supposed to be better. Pilot bearing or bushing goes right back here in the back of the crank. This engine was an automatic engine, so it has nothing, but it is drilled for it. Uh, just like with anything, you know, cleanliness is the key here, so we're just gonna take a scotch Brite and clean up any paint or rust or anything that's left in there. Put our bearing in here. You gotta drive these in. Whenever you're, if you're doing a bushing, you use like a wood block and just beat the shit out of it, right? These, you gotta, you don't wanna hit on the middle there. You don't wanna hit where the bearings are, so a socket might work better. I'm gonna put some goofy Ford shim plate on. Just like that. Then we put the uh, flywheel over that. I guess this one you could actually put it on afterwards. Well, I was just trying to figure out how to bolt the pressure plate to it, right? Because I, I noticed that there are extra bolt holes here. Well, there are. Uh, this takes a different kind of bolt. It takes a shouldered bolt, where the factory used a non-shouldered bolt. It also takes a different thread bolt. Uh, and then it's also a stepped thread. So it's some kind of special bolt that it doesn't provide. They don't give you a part number for it. It's just a mystery. Thoroughly less than impressed with this clutch kit. It took 11 days for this to get here. And I would have thought if it needed special bolts, it probably would have just came with special bolts. But no, after a lot of consternation, I finally figured out uh, what I need as far as bolts go. I guess we'll go ahead and mount the flywheel on. We can do that and I hopefully have the right bolts tomorrow to finish this out. Thankfully, I had the foresight to stop at Man Speed Specialty in Kansas City and pick up some ARP flywheel bolts so I figured you'd probably want them. Now, of course the flywheel only goes on one orientation. We gotta get her lined up. The flywheel is balanced. So it has a 28 ounce off balance cut into it in order for the engine to run smoothly. So you're gonna put a drop or two of blue Loctite on these. Throw them in, I'll zip them in with the impact and then come back with a torque wrench. Ready? Yep. You gotta hold on to it. <laughs> Slipping off. Okay. That better not come off. Oh, come on. It's only 85 pounds. Ah. One. Hold on. Okay. It is now the next day, and I have acquired some ARP pressure plate bolts. A couple things to note before you install a clutch you should always wear gloves. Keep oil off of the clutch face. I kind of forgot what bolt holes I'm shooting for. I think those. I'm going to bounce side to side when I tighten this down. We're going to tighten it down evenly. I just want to get it. We want to get them all hung on there and centered before I start throwing thread lock at it. As I'm doing this, I'm going to be checking to make sure that that clutch is aligned and that this alignment tool comes out free and easily. So I've got them all, all the way down. The pressure plate is flush against the flywheel. So now I'm gonna back them out one at a time. Just put a couple drops of medium strength thread lock, uh, put them back in and torque them to about 20 pounds. As I torque them and apply thread lock, I'm gonna witness mark each one with an X just so I don't get confused, which happens a lot. New throw out bearing installed. We got the clutch work clipped onto the pivot ball. Install our bell housing. I just mounted this highly suspect Chinese mini starter on here, and I don't trust it at all. I want to make sure it works before I put it in the car that you have to remove the steering rack and or engine to change the starter. And that's why I wanted to test it. Wow, that works really good. Let me test this thing on the ground. That's called a piece of shit. There it goes. Oops. Well, good thing I have that extra starter. Well, I mounted the used starter off of this engine. Well, it works. So that's good. It didn't sound like it was grinding or anything, so. Well, the battery's dead for sure, but this one worked, that one didn't. Let's go with the one that worked. Well, it's go time. We just have to put this in there and line it up with the transmission. Piece of cake. 
using my friend Chase, JD, one 12 pack of beer, and several hours deep into the night, we finally got the engine installed in the Cobra. Took a lot of finagling, but the engine's in here. Uh, bolted the motor mounts down. Now we just gotta reassemble, starting with put the bolts in the transmission to the bell housing. We're close back here. I'm gonna try to lift the bell housing up to get this to close the gap before I bolt it up. Get the transmission bolted up in there. Uh, we had a little gap we were dealing with and it didn't quite want to close up, but it did now. Uh, bottom threads were stripped, so I put a bolt and a nut in that one, and uh, yeah, it's kind of sketchy, but uh, you know, we'll just look over here. I just been buttoning up some things underneath. Uh, got the uh, clutch cable hooked up, uh, the clutch works hooked up, everything's done under there, I think. So let's put it back on the ground for the first time in a while with an engine in it. Hell yeah. I got a whole brand new set of auto lights here and throw some plugs in it. Since I destroyed all the old plugs, then we have to hope that my homemade wiring harness works. Uh, I'm sure that's going to be just fine. God, these look horrible. I'm just going to quit looking. <laughs> you might recognize this carburetor. It's the one I bought for Cody's Firebird on the side of the road in New Mexico. Let's put it to good use on this thing. Let me go see if I can find a carb spacer. Let's dug out this Mr. Crapsit aluminum carb spacer here. And uh, I guess it had one on it before. I guess there must be enough hood clearance for it. And as we all know, those carb spacers are worth like five horsepower or something as tested by somebody somewhere. Elder Brock on there. Ooh, look at that. Mmm, gorgeous. Gonna come out here today, try to wrap up some more on this thing. Hopefully have it running by the end of the day. Last night I just kind of piddled with it a little bit. Carbs on, fuel lines are routed, ran. Um, we're still gonna put our power steering pump on, so might have to move some stuff. Let's go ahead and start with accessories, get that on, try to get the radiator and all that stuff in. I have in front of me three alternators. This is the original one from the car. You can tell because it's, you know, completely barbecued. This one is the old one off my Torino, and this is off the parts car. And uh, the one off the parts car, wire's in better shape, but it's eaten. Actually, it's not as bad as I thought it was. I mean, you know, a little electrical tape, cover up the chew marks on it. All right, we'll just use this one. Trying to figure out Ford's very over complex accessory brackets. Um, you know, they take a 3 8 bolt, a half inch bolt, a 5 8 bolt, all of it, and then, you know, it's got to be with all these spacers and stuff. Alternators on, loosely, and the brackets are on. I put the lower pulley on. Got to figure out how the hell the power steering pump goes on. That's a big one. Uh, but then I started running heater hose and got distracted. This is the heater actuator valve that uh, the Mustang 2 uses, and it actually is still good. I don't think it really does anything. I don't know, maybe it needs flow to to make it open. Not really sure, but we'll put it on. Heater hose is on. Not really a good place to run this, but oh well. And the way this works is it just gets a vacuum signal from this line right here. Plug that in, and when you turn the heat on, this starts sucking, pulls that valve shut, and boom! You got heat. I should have paid better attention when I was taking off the power steering pump. I cannot figure out where the hell this thing's supposed to go. Now, this was an AC car. I'm not going to put the compressor back on because it's junk. The other car was not an AC. It looks like it uses this bracket to attach it. I'm going to rob it off the parts car's pump. And then this looks like it bolts to the water pump, but using that non AC bracket pretty much told me where it needed to go, so that was handy. If at first you don't succeed, just force it. That's uh, that's probably not very good life advice for you young guys out there. Actually, don't don't do that. I'm a big fan of anything that has these threaded adjusters. These are nice. I'm gonna go ahead and do the plug wires. Now, do I dare make the dangerous and stupid assumption that the distributor is installed correctly? I should have marked them before I removed the plug wires, but I didn't because I'm done. I'm gonna roll it over to top dead center pop the cap off and make sure it's pointing at number one, which is marked on the cap because it's a factory cap, probably from 1978, probably needs replaced. I'm rambling and that does seem to point at number one. We're all wired up and I'm just using zip ties as wire separators and uh, you know a lot of people still don't understand how this works. Let me see if I can explain it a little bit. So I've already done these here you can see. I'll just do two and that will make it a little bit simpler. Basically you take one zip tie put it around your wires right and then in between each wire you just put another zip tie and then bring it down a little bit down to here you see and I'm just gonna tighten that middle one which is separating the wires and then I'm gonna tighten this outside one and just kind of walk them back and forth I did that one kind of crappy because you really want to keep the the uh, 
tie part underneath, but that's all right for this. It'll be just fine. Try to get the radiator in there, put the hoses up, put some cool on it. Maybe, just maybe, we can fire this thing up soon. Hopefully this radiator's good. It's, uh, that was kind of an oversight on my part. I kind of just assumed that it would be fine. You know, whenever you've got a project and you and it takes longer than you expected and then you forget how everything went together. That's why I guess you were smart, you'd like video it or something so you could know, you know, and, and go back and review the video and, and know how things went in and yeah, I mean I, I just don't have that. You know, I would call this kind of a interference fit, actually. It's an engineering thing. Radiator is in, bolted in. We are literally like a radiator hose away from starting. I lost the bolts to this, and like most things in life, this problem can be solved with self-tappers. And I'll be driving them in manually, old school, caveman style self-tappers, you know, right there. Oh, yeah. That's gonna work. Will it runneth over? God, I hope not. Filling this up is a complete waste of time, but let's do it anyway. Oh shit! Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. This... <laughs> Solenoid stuck. Oh. Quality unit there. Brand new. It is new. I know. <laughs> Why are you doing that? Can you not? Ah, yeah, see, it's fixed. Okay. Put a little gas in it and see if we can get it to pop off. Maybe it'll drive even. Please tell me it's not pouring on the ground. It is pouring on the ground. Is it? Yep, stop. It's literally pouring on the ground. Well? Just a little. I think it's because I can't get this in there all the way. Pouring out? Uh, yes. Oh. Well, we'll fix that another time. Well, let's see if we have any spark or if we can at least pull some fuel up. Got spark. Must have got the distributor wiring done right. So that's a good start. That is a nasty looking gas. I didn't blow the line out. I should have. out of it. I don't know from where. Oh, up here somewhere. The thermostat housing's leaking on it. Could be worse. That's all right. We can fix that. That's better than what I thought it was. It runs horrible. <laughs> yeah, it sounds pretty bad. It sounds real bad. All right, we got some stuff to fix, that's for sure. Yeah. Where did that come from? I kind of, I got sprayed. It just blew out of here. Oh, oh, I had oh. the cap loose. That's that was me, sorry. 
Other than that, it sounds all right. I mean, like the transmission's working, clutch feels fine, so that's good. All right, let's fire it back up and try to get our eyes on where that coolant leak might be coming from. And I also might try to get the rings to unstick. <laughs> That thing's junk. Yeah, bang on that thing more. That's why you don't put the hood back on the car, to be sure. <laughs> Before I do anything, I'm gonna have to set the timing on it. They've got that set way too advanced. Ford rotates this way, so I'm gonna twist the distributor counterclockwise. The timing light's hooked up. It won't run anymore. I've checked for spark and we have it sometimes and we lose it. The car would no longer start until the next day when I went to pull the distributor to install a GM style HEI distributor and found the issue. There was a butt connector on that and then the wire just fell out of it. I guess I didn't get it crimped on all the way. Uh, even though it was heat shrinked, it the wires weren't touching. So now... <laughs> finish this thing and go drive it. So I'm going to go ahead and set the timing on this thing. If my vacuum advance disconnected. And I'm going to try to shoot for maybe 14 degrees before top dead center initial timing. And then I'm going to ignore the total timing. <laughs> We're going to see if we can get the rings to free up a little bit. I'm going to use another trick my grandpa used to show me. It's just to pour a little water down the car. Finish off my NHRA battery hold down install here. I Not think too it's, bad. I'm going to drop it and see what happens. Okay. Yeah. That helped. No, that's fine. It's, it's like got a... I think it's as good as it's going to get. We need to figure out how it actually, you know, drives. But uh, we only way to figure that out is to drive it. So let's see if it'll make it to the gas station and uh, maybe get some tacos. Then we'll see what the day brings. I mean, will it drive a couple hundred miles? We can find out. Most importantly, though. Oh. See the typical, the louver is just shaking away back there like a maraca. Clutch still needs adjustment, but first time on the road in 30 plus years. what the King Cobra is for, handling. Where do you be coming from? Clearly nothing to be concerned about, it's fine. It's not hot. Ain't got no pressure on it. Not low. 
Just get rid of what it doesn't want. That's that's what it is. No doubt about it. Let's feel the wheels. So these back brakes were really hot. And they were real tight when I put them on. Yeah. And because I put new drums and shoes on them, and I, I couldn't get them to adjust in any further. I thought we were smelling clutch, but we're actually smelling the, the freaking rear brakes is what it is. Which is good. I would much rather smell these than the $700 clutch and flywheel. Uh, these will just wear in or catch on fire. Either way. But that works fine. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> See, if you just don't, you know, if you just look over here, I mean, really, That's some nice clouds. You don't even notice. No, it, there's nothing going on. It's nice out today, yeah. though. Yeah, real good. Nice weather. Shit. Uh, I think it just wound the battery dead too, so that's nice. Grandpa saved the day bringing us a jump starter, and uh, that guy gets to clean up our mess, so I'm sure sweet. he appreciates that. The car is not too freaking bad, really. It's just, uh, you know, other than that pouring <laughs> gallons and gallons of gasoline <laughs> out of it. Let's take it, let's, I, I, I want to drive it, like I think it'd probably be all right, but let's play it safe, take it home, and uh, try to fix whatever the hell's wrong with that. Uh, and also probably put a new battery and I think the battery's just junk. It made it back, uh, not a flame actually. I'm gonna clean the shop out, fix that fuel leak at least, and then we'll try throwing another battery in it. I don't know, or, or test it, see if the alternator's working something. It's obviously charging because it drove home. I really don't want to work on this, but I have to. Inspired by words from my late grandfather, who said, shut the f up and get over it. I found the problem. It's not the hose. There's a crack in the surge tank. It's going to be very hard for you to see, but it's cracked right here. I, don't, I can't get this thing out of here. I'm going to use JB Weld Tank Weld. I've used this with pretty good luck over the years. Clean that off real good with some brake clean, wire wheel it, and then we'll epoxy it up. Only time will tell if that mess actually does anything. Stuff takes several hours to cure, so realistically, you'll probably just have to check it tomorrow, I guess. Let's see if I fix the thing. Well, the way to tell is more gas in it, I think. So far, so good. No, I think it's good. Hell yeah. I mean, at least for now. I gotta run over to my dad's this morning and help him with something. Let's try to drive this thing and see if it behaves a little bit better. Let's get us something better to listen to. Ah, there we go. Doing a lot better today. Right in here, it's not pouring gas out of it, so that's probably fixed. I'll probably go wash it, and then we'll go drive it around. That's a hell of a bubble brush. Oh yeah, that's, that's really going to clean her up there. This thing looks good. Cleaned up real nice. Hey! Oh God! No! Stop! Oh no! Uh oh! No! What? No! Please stop! Well, I'm not sure what happened, but uh, they did shut off. So we learned a valuable lesson. Don't touch that. The only real way to know if your work is good is to go drive the thing. So basically, we got to go shake this thing down, see what breaks, because I'm going to give this car to Jesse, and so you know, I want to make sure it's decent. So I'm going to try to get her around, and let's go drive it. There she is. Trying to sneak up on you. <laughs> there you go. Happy birthday. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and make this car completely legitimate. Uh, this is now that. Instantly legal. I found some cars I want to take a look at. They're about just about two hours away. And that's a good little trip for this thing. Be a couple hundred miles. Let's see if she'll do it. First, we're gonna grab some lunch. I'm gonna make Jesse drive it to lunch. Yeah. yeah. No problem. Alright. Oh, it's just cool. 
Couldn't drive bad though, does it? I like it. It's pretty good. <laughs> Good job. I'm pretty sure it even still has a clutch in it. Uh, yeah. For now. Not. Cool. Yeah. And I never tested the seat belts. If I buckle it up, and I'll get back out. Oh, okay. No, they work great. They work great. <laughs> Getting on the highway for the first time in 26 years. anywhere to hook up a fact or a aftermarket tip page. All the holes are too shallow for it, so I just decided to do nothing and yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, the blower motor works. Sounds great. Good God. It's getting better. Yeah, yeah, it'll yeah. fix itself. Well, it would be fun. Yeah, you know what? You, you can stop now. We stopped here at the gas station to see what the mystery fluid is on the windshield. And it's definitely antifreeze. It's coming out of that overflow there. Spraying over here, running all the way up the fender. Now it doesn't have the bottle on it, that's probably why. It's hot, but it's not super hot. And I would guess if it was over about 240 degrees, it would be boiling over right now, which it's not. I, I think we just need the overflow bottle. This is, I don't know, I'm not too worried about it. Obviously nothing to worry about there, just a little oil. That's how you know there's something in it. This battery's holding the charge. Still on the window. Three quarters of a tank of gas. Probably still in the tank even. I think what? like everything that I've done is okay on it. It's now we're just kind of to the point where we're shaking this thing down, get a feel for it. Obviously, if I'm gonna put you in this thing, it needs to be halfway decent, right? At least until I get the life insurance policy. Yeah. So. Eating antifreeze. What the hell is this thing? I don't know. It's got a camera too. Hi. Hi, you're on camera too. Yeah. Hi. Hello. This is a Verbig. We're probably getting like radiated right now. Oh well. Like glowing yet? I'm glowing, darling. It's just a little bit of oil. Kind just of a everywhere. Okay. It's not even that much, just a little. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Oh, my. All right. You're coming, you're coming out of there, ain't you? Yeah. Uh. Can't breathe good enough. We need to uh, get another pair of valve covers that has another breather. Maybe this breather may not even breathe good enough. It's just, uh, it's fine. Everything's great. It's okay. fine. Don't, don't worry about it. to hear it but I there's definitely some lifter noise going on or something. I don't know. Maybe it's already burned all the oil and or leaked it all. Maybe 
have to find somewhere to pull off and take a look at it. <laughs> yeah. Some fish might be completely out of oil in like 80 miles. Yeah. That's the hmm. sound of quality right yeah, there. That's, yeah, I picked probably the best engine I could. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't see anything really wrong. Too bad, you know. It's a... Uh... <laughs> it's empty. Oh, motherfucker. Just normal maintenance, really, on the Mustang. You know, it uh, burns nearly as much oil as it does fuel. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, just average day, you know. <laughs> well, we had to run away from the gas station because it's still leaking, uh, but only when you fill it all the way up, so no problem. Engine sounds awful. Uh, possibly getting better. I, uh, I guess we might as well go see these cars and then try to limp home. Maybe we'll buy one to get home. Well, it's made it to its destination. Anyway, this guy has some LTDs for sale, and I wanted to check them out. So we'll go look at them in a second. As of the oil that's going to happen in your yard. Yeah, and <laughs> I hope you didn't want any grass there. I was looking at some more land yachts today, because I don't have enough of those. And, uh, yeah, that baby's a 76, four-wheel disc brakes, oddball car. I don't really care about any of that, but it does have a 460 under the hood. So I think I'm going to snag that one possibly that light blue one up there that's all we were doing today though so you know we drove a couple hours and I'm gonna probably zip back home in it and see if we survive that so I'm gonna call it a success right now actually that's how confident I am that's right we got this. this guy would make a great cop car to uh, you know go smash into that mercury with and then I don't know what to do with that one but I don't know I can't I can't pass up a 460s say cheese <laughs> Said cheese. The cheese store is pretty cool. I don't even know what town we're in. But cheese this curd. that stuff's made in Missouri, like just a few miles from here. And it's his father and his sons. Oh my god, it's delicious. And <laughs> it bricks of cheese. Hemi brothers rubbed and smoked and Applewood smoked. Applewood smoked. So this place also has free samples. So uh, if you're a cheap bastard like me and you just want to go eat all their cheese, you know, you can probably do that. In my infinite wisdom, I have decided to take the car that burns all of the oil on Earth and then drive into the middle of nowhere. You see? Yes. Nowhere. Yes. Right in the middle of it. See, we could get oil right over there. Except to dig a while. The aerodynamics of this thing are great. <laughs> it just whisks the oil right away from it. Anyway, in, in the... <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah, well, in light of that, uh... Ah. It's been like 50 miles. Ah. We only have room for one quart, so we'll just put one in and we'll save the other one for later you know and it's repaired <laughs> done we're never gonna have to look at that again with our freshly rebuilt engine we venture off into the forest I think we're done finally thank god i mean uh it's a great car and congratulations it's that bad it needs some little knickknack stuff like i don't know maybe clean up the exxon valdez oil spill that comes out of it every time it moves if you liked this remember to hit subscribe like whatever and buy a shirt or whatever that's down in the description you know whatever the other youtuber guys do just pretend i said that and uh you know the more successful people you know just pretend i'm them and 
uh, here, you know, the Mustang, it, it's done. It runs, it drives. It's been sitting for 26 years. It's back on the road and being used. Eh, this one's a keeper, frankly, it'll stick around. So anyway, uh, thank you. Uh, big thanks goes to uh, that Mustang over there. Uh, thank you for being garbage and allowing me to harvest you. So I know there's gonna be a lot of people that don't know anything about anything that say, oh my God, you scrapped that car. See that frame rail there? Take a look at this frame rail. See how this frame rail is all one piece? It's all one color. See how that frame rail is blue? And then welded together, torched, beaten, like that hole there? That's a torch hole, not a rust hole. Um, that, that's half of another car welded into the front of this car poorly and it's whacked on this side and that wheels pushed back this car is junk the king cobra is finished you'll probably see it again as we wrap up the little things it needs and without any doubt that car is going to deserve body and paint work because it's just really good looking we'll see you guys next time in Polmar garage bye